So in this presentation, we are going to take a look at the simple machine called a lever. And we're also going to introduce the concept called efficiency. So let's get started. You're all familiar with a, a lever. And a lever is simply just a rigid bar that's used to do some kind of work. You've all been on a, a seesaw or a teeter-totter, depending on what terminology you use. Uh, and that would be the, the top middle version. And there are three different kinds of levers that we're going to explore. First, let's take a look at the first class lever. So there's a term that you need to understand, uh, and that's really the, the pivot point on the lever, and that's called a fulcrum. Um, so a fulcrum, in this case, uh, in a first class lever is always between the effort force and the resistance force. First class lever is pretty unique because it is the only lever that can have a mechanical advantage either greater than or less than one. It can also be equal to one. So let's take a, a closer look at each of those cases. So in the top middle, you see, the, and we're assuming here that the length of the arrow means that the, the forces are the same. So in the top middle, you see the effort force and the resistance force are the same, and the distance from the effort force and the resistance force to the fulcrum. That fulcrum is right in the middle. So in this case, the mechanical advantage equals one. And we'll go through those, uh, those calculations here in a bit. Now let's move to the lower left example. Here you have the effort force is larger than the resistance force, but you also see that the fulcrum is moved closer to the effort. So because of that, that's why I need a larger effort force to keep that in equilibrium. In this case, the mechanical advantage is less than one. Finally, in the lower right, you see where the fulcrum is moved closer to the resistance force. And to keep that in equilibrium, and we'll discuss equilibrium shortly. You have to have the mechanical advantage in this case. When we do the calculations, it turns out to be greater than one. So first class lever can have uh, three different cases and it's very special. You'll need to know what those three cases are. Let's take a look at uh, the second class lever. In a second class lever, you have the fulcrum or the pivot uh, is at one end, and the resistance force is in the middle. And you'll also notice that the effort force and the resistance force are pointed in opposite directions. Unlike the uh, first class lever, where they're both going in the same direction. Think teeter-totter when you think first class lever. One other important thing to know about second class levers is that the mechanical advantage is always always greater than one. Finally, let's take a look at the third class lever. Here, it's just, it's switched a little bit in terms of the forces. The fulcrum is located at the end, just like it is for a second class, but here you have the resistance force at the end. In the second class lever, at the end you have the effort force. And in this case, we're going to find that when we calculate the mechanical advantage, it's always less than one. Physically, what that means is I'm going to have to put more effort force to move that resistance. So if I have 100 pounds of resistance, I'm going to have to have something greater than 100 pounds to move that resistance force. That's what a mechanical advantage of less than one means. Let's introduce something new. Um, it might be new to you, I'm assuming it's new to you, and it's called a moment. And we're not talking about a point in time, we're talking about a moment as it refers to engineering. So recall back when we talked about uh, work. Work is a force times a distance, but that distance was the distance that was uh, in the same direction as the force. So for example, if the force was uh, pointing down, our distance would also be up and down. But when we talk about moments, 
a moment is uh, a force times a distance, but it's a perpendicular distance. And the formula for that is distance times force. And there's also a term that we use pretty much interchangeably in engineering, and that's called a torque. Uh, torque and moment are two terms that are used interchangeably in engineering for the most part. So a torque is just what it says here. It's a force that tends to uh, produce rotation uh, or torsion. So if you hear the word torsion, think rotation. Well, how does that apply to a lever? Uh, let's take a look at that. So here we have a lever. Uh, it's a first class lever. Uh, and we're given uh, some sort of resistance force. We don't know what it is, but we have uh, an effort force of 15 pounds in the perpendicular distance. The distance from the effort force to the fulcrum is 5.5 inches. So let's calculate that. So the moment is equal to that distance times the force. And when we plug in the numbers, we have 5.5 inches times 15 pounds and that gives us 82.5 inch-pounds. Pretty simple. Now here is something that's very important. When we do all of our calculations, we want to consider uh, things that are in equilibrium. And here you see equilibrium basically means that it can be kind of confusing, but you can kind of think of it in this way. Uh, a rotational equilibrium means that the moments, think of that first class lever, the force times the distance from the effort is equal to the force times the distance on the, uh, the effort moment equals the resistance moment. So let's go through an example. Um, here you see that uh, lever we had, the first class lever we had a couple of slides ago. And what we want to calculate is what is that uh, resistance distance? And we're finally given in this slide that the resistance force is 36 and two thirds pounds. Kind of an odd number, but we'll work with it. <coughs> Excuse me, as you uh, go down and look at the equations, the first equation, we've already calculated the moment from the effort force. That's 15 pounds times 5.5 inches, 82.5 inch-pounds. On the right-hand side, because they have to be equal to be in equilibrium, we have the resistance force, which is 36 and two-thirds pounds, times our dr. So when we do the math and we solve, we find that the resistance distance is 2.25 inches. So that's going to put us in equilibrium. And what we really should have shown was that equation up front. Uh, the effort moment equals the resistance moment. CC in this case is counterclockwise and clockwise. Uh, this slide, quite frankly, I really don't like. Here's what you need to know. It shows the, the derivation of some certain things that reinforce what rotational equilibrium is. Here's what you need to know. Know what's in red there. And what it says is this. If I have just an effort force or just a resistance force without something to balance it, if I have just an effort force with no resistance, I'm just gonna spin. That lever is just gonna keep spinning and spinning and spinning until I provide some sort of resistance times the distance that will equal the effort force times the effort distance. That's what you need to know from this slide. I don't expect you to know the derivation. So let's look at uh, a little bit deeper into uh, an actual mechanical advantage. So remember for that the actual mechanical advantage is uh, the ratio of the resistance to the effort force. And here we're given again a first class lever, kind of keeps things simple. Uh, the numbers have changed a little bit. So we see an effort force of 16 pounds and 32 pounds for resistance, and it gives us our distances. So what is the AMA? Well, we just do some plug and chug. We plug in 32 pounds 
for the resistance, it's 16 pounds in the denominator. Our units cancel, so we end up with an AMA of 2 to 1. Well, what's the IMA? We can calculate that because we're given the distances. We remember what the formula is. It's DE over DR. And we plug in our numbers. 5.5 inches over 2.25 inches. Our units cancel. And we get an IMA of 2.44 to 1. But wait a second. The IMA is larger than the AMA. And that's due to friction. So efficiency is a, really a measure of how much energy we're getting out of a system. Uh, in this case, we can apply it to simple machines. And it really tells us for the amount of energy that we put in, how much energy are we getting out? So let's go back to, and I'm not going to click on the previous slide, but let's write down what the numbers are. So remember from the previous slide, we had an AMA of 2 to 1 and an IMA of 2.44 to 1. So if we use that formula above and we plug in our numbers, the percent efficiency is 2, this is our AMA, divided by 2.44. You don't have to write them as ratios. And we multiply times 100 to get a percentage. And we all end up with 82% efficiency. Very important thing to remember. You will definitely be quizzed on this. No machine anywhere in the world is 100% efficient. If you do find that it's 100% efficient or greater, you need to go back and check your calculations. And that concludes the presentation on levers and efficiency.